Hunt Fish Shoot is back out on the range today. As you guys know, I'm Mike with Hunt Fish Shoot, and I'm gonna show you guys a little tip on controlling recoil. We get a lot of requests from it, especially in our videos when people watch them and they wonder how I control recoil. Well, for starters, we'll just start real simple with that, but then we'll go from there. So if you guys like what you see today, I want you to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. I came from the mud, there's dirt on my One of the biggest things that you want to have when you're controlling recoil shooting in general is your stance. There isn't a whole lot that needs to go into your stance. The biggest thing that I saw is from Pat McNamara and he just talks just stand up. And the reason he says that is because in a gunfight, in a law enforcement encounter, whatever it might be, you're not going to have time to get down and crouch and do all those things, to get in a better shooting position like you see from USPSA and some of the competition shooters. What they do is right. That's very good. But the problem with that being is it's unrealistic in a self-defense situation. You don't have time for those things. And then after you just are standing up, you're gonna have a nice punched out. You're gonna be all the way out, okay? And now I'm gonna show you here on the target when I do shoot and how all of your posture and your shoulders and your arms and all your muscles essentially work into you controlling the recoil as well as your grip. And from the grip, what we're gonna start with there is on your grip, you wanna literally get your hand as high as you possibly can, nearly to the point that you're gonna get slide bite on that pistol. And you'll see when I get my hand on, especially on this Walther PDP that I'll be demonstrating with, I get it up as high as I can get it on the back here. So it's almost like it's just squishing the webbing of my hand. I get it up as high as I can. After I get it as high as I can, I grip the gun nearly as tight as I can. Not so tight that it's you know shaking in there, just firm, a nice firm grip. And then with your support hand, you're gonna wedge it up underneath the trigger guard. And once you do that, you're almost gonna get it on that first knuckle. And then you're gonna wrap your hand around, okay? And then what you'll notice on this when I do it is all the fingers pretty much interlock with the other ones in the gaps or the valleys. And once you're all the way up there, you wedge it in there and you'll rotate it back Okay, and you'll see here on the left side of the gun is that it almost essentially covers up that whole gun in there and you're gonna get your hands in there. You won't have a gap back here between your two palms and that's gonna be very important also to get that good grip. So wedged all the way in there, nice and tight on your grip and then just basically you're gonna squish or crunch that gun between the two, almost like you're crushing a walnut. And you're gonna, it's almost like a vice grip is how I always like to tell a lot of people when I'm showing them how to shoot, especially my friends is that you're almost gonna squish it like a walnut back there, okay? And then you apply pressure with all of your hands and especially this support hand is where you get a lot of that recoil control after that because it's in there. And the reason I said to start with, with your, basically your trigger hand, is, is that if you got that tight, you can get the other one tight in there and you're not gonna have a loose gun inside your hands and it really helps with recoil mitigation. So let's start there. I'll show you guys that grip here while I'm shooting. When I shoot now, on camera, what I'm gonna do for you guys is I'm gonna shoot paper. Steel is a lot of fun to shoot. It provides feedback for you guys to see as viewers. But the problem with steel is it doesn't show the groups that you're shooting. And if you're not having good recoil control and a lot of the other things that go into it, steel doesn't show that. Paper shows your mistakes. It keeps you honest. I like shooting paper more than I like shooting steel for that simple fact. And anytime I do shoot it, it shows me when I've gotten lazy shooting steel. So let's start. So again, you're just gonna stand up like a normal person. Like you're standing there talking to your buddy. You're gonna put your feet. For me, I usually have my left foot just slightly bladed in front of me. And the reason for that being is in a law enforcement standpoint for myself, I keep my gun back and almost puts me in a fighting stance. So that's how I usually stand up at a car or whatever it might be when I'm talking to somebody. So from that point, you're gonna come up, okay? And you'll see when you, what you notice is you kind of roll my shoulders in a way where I use my whole body as essentially to absorb that recoil. I do not lock my elbows out. That's something that you, you saw in a lot of law enforcement and military that they locked out all the way out forward like this, okay? But the problem with that, that shooting stance is it doesn't allow your body to really absorb that recoil like you would want to do. So by not locking your elbows out all the way, and you almost rotate them out just a touch, you also allow yourself to almost crunch or squish that gun between your palms a little better. And then with your recoil control, 
you're able to keep the gun nice and flat. With that, a lot of people don't realize when you start getting shooting with both eyes open, how much recoil control helps shooting with both eyes open because you're not constantly trying to find that front sight pose because it just comes right back down to where it's supposed to be. So again, all the way out. Okay, you rotate your shoulders or your elbows just out just a touch. You don't lock them out completely. And you're using your upper torso to absorb that recoil. Weight is going to be slightly forward. You know, you don't want to be lean back. Okay, you'll be slightly forward on the gun and on your weight in general, almost on the balls of your toes. Okay, and a good shooting position. And this shooting position in general is natural and you're not tight. You're allowing your body to be strong. Okay, and you're seeing now on the target as I shoot it, all my hits are A zone. Am I shooting super fast? No. Am I really having to aim once I get that front sight post on there to start with? Not whatsoever. And that's what I'm looking for. And the Walther PDP helps out a lot because it's got an awesome trigger, but the trigger doesn't matter if you can control that recoil. All right, so now, now that we've shot those a little slower per se, I'm gonna just let it rip real quick for you guys. It's 10 rounds, I'm gonna shoot them about as fast as I can. We're at 10 yards and I'm gonna see if I get almost all of them inside that A box. Okay, and what you saw, I'll show you now. Again, what I'm talking about when paper keeps you honest is that my hits start rising, okay? That's me not driving that gun at the target as well as I should have been. And that's what I've noticed there with that is that paper shows you that. When you come over here and you shoot steel, steel just sounds sweet every time you hit it. You won't see this, okay? So I'm not gonna sit here and tell you guys that I'm the most perfect shooter. Have I figured out recoil control to a good extent? So I'm gonna shoot a little bit more for you guys and then hopefully you get the point. The last segment there, you saw how my shots rose. I got lazy of recoil management and I didn't drop the gun at the target how it's supposed to be. You hear that term a lot if you start watching videos and you watch experienced shooters and trainers do it. And what they're talking about when they say drive the gun is that you're basically keeping that gun on target at your threat and you're not letting it drift off. Essentially, you know, and even then they're talking about driving the gun to different targets, which we're not going to go into that. That's a lot more in depth. So I'm going to shoot again for you guys, do 10 rounds. Again, I'm gonna do them in the pelvic region on the target, and I'm gonna keep all those rounds inside that A box at this distance. All right, so we're all the way out. Okay, we're, we're crunching the walnut, as I like to say, wedging your hand up underneath there as far as you can get it, nice high grip. You see my left hand, the thumb is way up on the frame. Okay, almost to the point where it's on the slide. You could actually use on this one, it says Carl Walther, you can actually use almost like a ledge and help that control, control recoil also. All right, now you'll see on that one there, yeah, I went off to the left a touch, but what you're seeing there is not recoil. That's actually just my trigger in general, or the trigger pull. So you'll saw how all my targets ascent, or shots essentially stayed horizontally and they didn't rise vertically like this one did okay now you can shoot faster with time and experience and things like that but that takes time and experience it takes a lot of rounds down range to reach that and even myself you always have to be a student as a shooter you have to shoot a lot you have to practice and i know ammo is expensive but if you want to improve you have to shoot so if you guys like what you saw today and you want to see more of what we're doing with this video, we'd be happy to do it for you. Just let us know in the comments. Otherwise, like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. But follow along next time with Hunt, Fish, Shoot.